people from all around the world are looking to become chartered engineers because it is an important and valuable milestone in the career of any engineer. Now, becoming a UK chartered engineer is possible from outside the UK. So, be it Australia, Qatar, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, you know, you name it. Now, thanks a lot for visiting this channel. And in this video, I will aim to provide guidance on some of the steps to take in order to become a UK chartered engineer. We'll start by looking at the eligibility and educational requirements. So first of all, you're expected to be registered with the professional body that concerns you and you're expected to be up to date with your payments. If your degrees are in a language other than English language, you will need to have them translated into English. You're also expected to obtain a UK equivalent of your, uh, of your documents, of your degrees. Now, if you plan to go through the CNG route, you're expected to have a master's degree and if you plan to go the I end route, you're expected to have at least a bachelor's degree. Um, in either case, it's important for you to seek advice from your institution regarding what route is best suited for you. So we have a look at the accountability diagram and basically um, for the accountability you expect it to provide as much information as possible regarding the status of your colleagues and also the status of your line management. So this is very important. We have got an example here. And in this example, the candidate is a member of the IET. Um, he is in the electrical installations team and um, his line manager is a fellow with the IET. The head of engineering is also a fellow, um, this time with the IMEC-E. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that um, in, this, in this example, um, you've got other business units like, say, the finance, the HR, supply chains. But the accountability diagram focuses on the candidate's line management up the tree. Now, the CPD. For the CPD, what you are expected to provide is you're expected to provide a log of your personal development. So it might be training, it might be um, volunteering activities, it might be, um, you know, other um, development actions that you have um, taken part in. And um, it's important for you to have a minimum of 25 hours that you can prove. So for instance, attending a course online with your professional body would count towards continuing personal development. Now for the development action plan, it basically covers what you plan to do in order to develop yourself. So your future plans and um, it's important for you to identify, um, you know, look at your, the UK spec. You can consult the third edition for now because the fourth edition will actually go live in December of 2021. Um, so for your development action plan, it should identify a blend of learning um, so that will include work-based learning and, um, you know, other development trainings.
So as an example of a development action plan, this candidate plans to develop the E3 competence and he has identified a specific task. Now the E3 competence is undertake engineering activities in a way that contributes to sustainable development. Now the activity he plans to partake in is to improve his understanding of the company's processes relating to safe handling and storage of fuels. Why is this action necessary? In order to ensure compliance with coma regulations by safely storing fuels in order to prevent accidents and reduce the environmental impact of fuels on site. And how exactly will this action be achieved? By attending a specific training course and by organizing meetings with the health and safety executive lead on site. And you should have a start and finish date for your development action plan. As you compile your evidence of competences, it's important for you to assess yourself. So carry out a self-assessment of your different competences just to give you an idea of where you think you are. So it's important for you to have a mentor or someone who is at least as experienced as yourself to cross-check the gradings you have given to yourself. Now we come to the most important bit, the report, the professional registration report. Now I'll just go through some of the, the points we've stated here. So basically one thing you have to know is that um, it's not a CV. Um, it's not a list of your work achievements. So it's basically a demonstration of your knowledge and your understanding and your ability to assimilate that knowledge and understanding in the discharge of your duties. Uh, most importantly, it is a statement of your competence and how you can demonstrate that, uh, you know, the competences you have against the competences specified in the UK spec. Now, the useful questions to ask yourself as you write is each paragraph is, what was the project, right? What was the, uh, the business challenge or what was the business need? Um, what was your role in that project? What exactly did you do? And what were your contributions? How exactly did you do it? And what were the outcomes? And finally, what difference did it make to the, to the business or to your company? So one thing you have to bear in mind is that um, as you prepare for the application and as you prepare for your interview, the ultimate question you should be prepared to answer is what difference did it make to the business? How much did you save your company, for instance? Now, answers to these questions need to provide competency evidence which can be married alongside the UK spec competence profiles. So you have to be careful in the action words you use. So things like leading, peer, um, pioneering, managing, those are the sort of words that we um, would like to see. So you should avoid, if you plan to go for the C end routes, at least, you should avoid using words like coordinate, support, review, oversee. So for the C end, whoever is assessing your report will be looking to see that you are leading things. You've got a high level of responsibility. So that's very important. So try to look for um, projects that will show innovation. So we've got um, some examples of um, action words. So feel free to, to use them and also feel free to explore and discover other action words that could be relevant. 
Um, so for the C inch, basically we are looking at um, strategy, strategy. So that's the keyword strategy, rather than um, looking at the um, the tactical side. So very important. Um, or you may be employing emerging technology, or perhaps you may be inventing new technology. And um, if you have got people working for you, it's important that you mention that. If you make a statement and you think the assessor is, you know, the assessor is, is not too sure about what you've said, um, then perhaps you might have to, you might need to reward your report. So presentation is very, very important and ensure that your paragraphs do not have long lead ins. Try to go straight to the point. Tell us exactly what you did and how you did it. So limit it to say five lines. So that's a, a rough um, to give you an idea of um, how lengthy your paragraphs should be. And you need to give your application the best shot first time. I mean, you don't want the panel coming back to you asking for supplementary information. You've got to tighten all loose ends. And um, I usually like this um, sentence. You shouldn't just knock on the door of chartership. You need to kick it open, wide open. You've got to wow the assessors and make your submission stand out from the dozens and dozens that pass under their noses. So quality is more important than quantity. So um, if you plan to start your report, how do you start it? So this is what I normally advise candidates. So you start off by listing the major projects that you have um, delivered upon projects you've executed and try to see, um, basically you write bullet points and see how um, each task can be mapped to the UK competence. So you should use your, your CV or your competence dozy as a guide. So remember, you're not, um, it's, you're not writing your CV. All you're doing is you're looking at your CV, you're looking at what you have um, accomplished over the years, and then you extract information from your CV. So that's the aim. So this is an example of a competence um, for, this is an engineer, for instance, a commissioning engineer. And um, you basically give a context. So you tell us what you were doing. So um, this engineer was responsible for carrying out tests on all electrical components for the electrical commissioning department. And he has given us an idea of how much the project costs. So he's got some competences here. So he's got some B2 and B3 competences here. So lead factory acceptance tests, for instance, is something he can develop upon. So he can develop that into a paragraph on its own. Um, produced commissioning test procedure. That's another paragraph he can develop on its own. Um, if we go down to the D competence, um, he presented the solar panel design to the CEO of his company. So that's quite some um, significant. That shows that um, he is in a position to present technical information to very high members of his um, company. So this is a building block for the report. So this is one role and um, we'll look at a second one. So for this one, the candidate feels that he's got some strong competence um, under the C, C1 and C3. So for this project, he actually negotiated logistics support required for the project and he delivered monthly training on data logging to members of his company. So you can see that um, he has got some, you know, some good examples to start working on. So we'll look at an, an example of, um, this is a paragraph on A2. So the A2 competence is engaging 
in creative and innovative um, development. Now you'd see that um, this competence, this example actually provides us with um, good information. So some of them have been highlighted in red. So some of the questions that um, you expected to provide answers to. So whilst working as a lead design engineer, so that's clear, everyone knows what exactly your role was at the supersonic power plants. I developed, uh -huh, so we know exactly what you did. You developed what you developed a new technology. So you developed a new data logging system for the turbine control system. That's very good. So why was this necessary? This was necessary because the existing data logging system of the turbine control system was obsolete and unsustainable. In addition, the data printing system was slow and there was frequent occurrence of paper jams leading to significant downtime. So you have given us very good context and we know what the problem was. Now, what exactly did you do? Um, I designed and implemented the new system using LabVIEW. Um, more details on the design will come under a different competence. But here, you're just talking about um, your ability to be creative and to innovate. So in addition to designing and implementing the new system, I also incorporated a functionality to log the turbine data onto log files in dedicated computers, allowing users to format the data before sending it for printing. I also provide specification for a replacement printing system. The new system has eliminated downtime related to maintenance of the previous system. So the candidate has told us um, what the new system does and the benefits the new system brings to the business. So very, very important. Now, if you've checked your report and you have had your mentor or your sponsors within your company check your reports and verify that everything is okay, you must have seen a professional registration advisor once everything is sorted, you can send off your application to your professional body and make sure that you've gotten your certificates um, translated. You send them off and um, basically you would, um, uh, you expect to hear back from the, your professional body and um, after the application, if further information is required, you will be contacted. And one thing you have to know is that um, it's very important to have a very good report produced because um, the assessors will have uh, made up their mind, I think, from the report. If you have a very, very good report, then I think you're 60% um, through. So what they would like to see is um, for you to be tested. So they need to verify that you actually wrote the report yourself. So it means you should be ready to answer questions from just about anything in that report. So it's very, very important that you produce a good report. Um, so it will be expected of you to be um, ready for your interview. You should be very confident. So that's very important. For the... For the interview, you can organize um, you can organize mock interviews within your company. Um, I often tell candidates to treat the professional registration interview as a as a sort of job interview. It's a special job interview, if you like, because basically you're talking about what you did. The only difference is you are to present your major achievements using the UK spec as a guide. So like I said earlier, your registration report has been studied by the panel beforehand. And so they must have had an impression already. It, so it's now your task to sound very confident 
and present your competence in a clear and logical manner. And also ensure that you have revised your reports and you are in a position to explain everything therein if called upon to do so. So we can provide you with um, mock professional registration interviews to help you prepare for the interview. We can also help you prepare your slides if you are struggling in that regard. So what next? So you've got so many options. Um, after you become chartered, you can volunteer to become a professional mentor. You can apply to become a chartered manager if management is um, the career path you plan to follow. And um, yeah, you can become a fellow in a few years time. So um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope you have gained something by watching this video. If you require further explanation on any section, um, please do not hesitate to get in touch. And finally, please like this video and follow this channel so that you can be notified whenever there is any new content. And remember, do not just knock on the door to become chartered. Kick it open.